everybody, welcome back to another Hot Dab Sessions presented by Rosin Evolution. This is Dr. Darby and today we're joined with the founder of Third Gen Family, the most award-winning company in the history of the Emerald Cup, Brandon. Brandon, thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks guys, man. Good time. <laughs> Stoked to have you here, brother. So today we have the luxury. Brandon brought through a cornucopia of flavors. I believe he said he had 14 different flavors from their summer depth. It's a single source family farm in NorCal. So we're gonna get to try a couple of the flavors and get the uh, info straight from the horse's mouth himself. What, do you, what should we start with, Brandon? What do you suggest? I mean, you know, we're gonna start with some PZ and J. Okay. You know, uh, it's a good, you know, a peanut buttery, like a Gorilla Glue Skittles type of terp. So it's, you know, a little different, but it's got some sweet on there too. Mm -hmm. A little old school, but some sweet on there Something too. new to an, or something old as a new twist. Yeah, 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 something old and something new. And that's cool. Damn, it really fucking smells like a peanut butter and jelly. That yeah. is crazy. <laughs> I can smell that. Well, cause no one really hates the glue. It's just, it was, there's a lot of it, you know? So that's... you mix something good with it. So what yeah, is this, oh, Gorilla Glue? That sucks though, you know, sometimes things get played out, you know, and it's because of overproduction sometimes. So, yeah, I agree. You know. Well, and it's a, a yielder also, so everyone had a shitload of it, and you know, re that was right before regulations hit super hard, so there was an abundance of backdoor in it too, where you're like, dogs, like, no more growing it. Yeah, well, exactly. Some and people still things, got glue one day. <laughs> when things produce good, it makes it unfortunate, you know what I mean, when they get played out. There's an idea that we got that we're toying with uh, the Templar, and I know I talked to Dust a little bit about it, but uh, it's an idea to basically get us producers to get on the same level about what we're cultivating and uh, how much we're producing. So then at the end of the year, we're not all battling with the same product and we can maintain market you know, value and market share and all that good stuff together. It we can, can almost do that. become region based to where certain regions have certain flavors available and they don't really cross over. Like you said, like maybe like a weed union or something in the past, yeah. I've heard you talk about. Yeah. Where well, everybody yeah. gets a, a seat at the table, but nobody controls the table, right? And that's mm -hmm. kind of the, if we I don't know. do it, then somebody else is gonna do it and we're not gonna have a seat at the table. And it's the best way to really establish yeah. a, a in-touch network of people that are producing and creating. Yeah. All right, so now that we have PZ this PB&J and J. And J we're gonna get to try, I'm gonna pull up the QBC can so everybody at home can check this out. So first of all, check out the artwork. Um, you mentioned before we went live that this artwork was made by uh, Sticker Farmer. Yeah, Sticker Farmer Mendo, straight killing it, man. Um, they elevate your game, you know, they do everything. We got a Pogs collab, we did an official Pogs release for the PuffCon. Oh, really? And, uh, like, yeah, we had Pogs made by Pogs. Like that's pretty pogs. sick. You know yeah, 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 the old game. Yeah, the old game where you had the slammers. With the news flash, it's a Pog milk cap invasion. Milk cap sightings are pouring in by the thousand. The cause is anyone's guess. With the uh, shredders or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So we had Pogs make us some uh, Terp Pogs. That was my and, first uh, uh, bong. Yeah, the first one. <laughs> <laughs> you got the Pog, pog container? Yeah, yeah. You know it. a hole in the side. Yeah. Uh, Ready to roll. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Sarah, do you want to pull that back up again? Damn, I wanted to get some of those Pogs then. That's some nostalgic shit right there. We'll just there. have to edit it, but uh, here's a close-up. This is the PB and... PZ and J. PZ and J. Yeah. So you said this was a cross between uh, Grease... It's a Gorilla. Gorilla Glue. And it's OZ. So it's Skittles, OG, Eddie, and Gorilla Glue. Yeah, wow. that's that's a good cross. It smells yeah. amazing. Because the glue, you get some gas and some funky peanut buttery they, flavors they, out of. They, like they the graham well. crackery flavor is yeah, what I get. Yeah, they breed well. When, yes. you, when you can breed like, like plants together, you get more of like an IBL. It's more stability in the cross. So if you, and it, when you get really uh, hyper hybridized things is when you're crossing multiple things together mm -hmm. that are so far apart that you're getting this wide plethora of things and maybe even hermaphrodism in there and all kinds of other weird stuff. Maybe. So, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean most people are running just, into that. Yeah, exactly. You're, you, you're opening the door for more issues. So it's like when you, you, you really want to breed like genetics together. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, Skittles, for instance, right, is a velvet leaf plant, you know? Um, when you breed with other velvet leaf plant, you're gonna get more green bud, and it's gonna burn softer, smoother, flush easier. And for those that don't know, what is a velvet leaf plant? Are you talking about the texture of the actual so, leaf like, when you're for touching instance, it? Yeah, like a sherbet okay. or like a, a gelatos and all those like original cookies, the uh, Thin Mints and stuff, they all have this like leather leaf. Yeah, okay? I know what you're talking about. And they're about. really hard to flush the fertilizers out Right, and a lot of these people are using synthetics and stuff like that, even if you're using organics or whatever. It's hard to get the plant to release yes. all of it. It's in this thick leaf, 
And so like it's it's like holds the plant fertilizer even longer. And some of those like gelatos you, it's that have easier that. to overfeed <laughs> some of those cookie plants where they got the small rock hard nugs, mm -hmm. fully purple, real crisply, but they're like pin like pin you know like you know dime size nuggets. Yeah, you're like this and is overfed, overdone, rocked up, boop, you know like little pebble yeah. nugs. And mm -hmm. then if you if you if you back up the feeding a little bit on like say the cooks, I remember yeah. in school right, you're growing the cooks, the bud would be more open. And more juicy, and it would you'd get a bigger bud. It'd still be hard, but you just you know there's a there's a balance. So like for instance, Skittles is a velvet leaf plant. You can feed feed the plant, and then it releases the fertilizer a lot easier, in my opinion, than some of these other plants that hold it in. It's like this dark lettuce leaf, you know. Yeah, yeah I've so. had some <clears throat> issues in the past of trying to flush the leather leaf plants, and like. Yeah. Two weeks, it's still at it's 1500 still... ppm's, and you're like, What the fuck? Where's this coming from? Yeah. <laughs> like, where are... oh, God yeah. damn. And then you're like, I can't just keep feeding it water forever. I'm like, At a certain point, you just gotta cut it. Well, yeah, because they're just like, they're popping fresh hair on you, and they're starting to foxtail and stretch and string I'm out like, on I sh you. I should have and... just been doing half feeding this whole time. I was yeah. like, hey, It was in there. I yeah, could have just was... fed it water for a week. Yeah. Fuck <laughs> me, man. Like, what the hell? So, you know. What's your opinion on salts versus organic then? Do you feel an organic red? Regimen is easier for the plants to reach their full maturity and their full potential? I think that soil is more flavorful and more forgiving and uh, better for the planet and better for us. Mm -hmm. You are what you eat, mm -hmm. you know? And so the synthetics, and you are what you smoke. Mm -hmm. So synthetics, um, in my opinion, you can grow full melt hash, you can make rosin. And it's all good, right? It's all in like the amount you use. Mm -hmm. So it's like there's people that are overdoing it with these high intensity lights mm -hmm. and they're fucking doing this like, like steroid ramping amounts. up and fucking steroid fucking their, their shit out. And you're getting a lot, but a lot of less quality. Yeah. And so there's a balance when they're when they're pumping these things up. In my opinion, there's a balance when you're getting you you know, this amount of yield, but the quality is there, mm -hmm. you know? And that always is like, I'm gonna tell you straight up, man, I got like a pound and a half of light last time I was growing indoor of the most fire Z you'll ever see. Mm -hmm. But I was growing under Hortolux I single-ended screw bulbs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I never even grew under these Gavitas. Mm -hmm. That's Ever since the Gavitas <laughs> came out, um, weeds changed. Yeah. And then you see the LED weed, weeds changed even worse. Mm -hmm. So it's like, to me, we're firing up another 12 lamper and it's going to be the Hortolux I single end screw bulb, baby, because that's what the fuck the best in the Throw world is. under some Ochos. <laughs> yeah, right under the fucking Ochos and them Raptor 8s. I got know? two of my Ochos sitting at home still because I'm like, these are Tri still good. I'm watching XLs, everyone go through yeah. them and I'm just like, I'm not convinced. Yeah. I'm not going to, you can see the grease ring not there on the LEDs. And no, you're like, oh, yeah. I grow for oil. I don't grow for carbon matter. Like, what are we yeah, doing? Exactly. It's just a yeah, catalyst resin. for the oil. It's, resin that's, farmer. That's a resin farmer, you yeah. know, and that's what I always tell people is like, there's a, there's a, you're making more mass and I don't need more mass. That's no. trappage. Yeah. You're getting trappage. And I need it to be a little bit more open and soft and juicy. When you break it down, surface you, area, you want it to be like a nice pile of herb, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You won't want to have to like sit there and like break up a little piece of pebble and you're like trying to break it apart. With you're your like, fingernail. Is, yeah, you're like so with your fingernail. Fucking... You're like, that. that's too much. Mm -hmm. That's not natural. You know, like a natural flower is more open they and miss soft the and mark breaks apart. Yeah. On them enjoyable. And like, that's what I told people when you're trimming it, you, you're the one that makes it look like a bud. If you don't grow it to look like a bud, if you don't trim it and dry it to look like a bud, it's not. Yeah. If you don't grow real weed, it's not going to be a real weed until you make it real weed. Yeah, big time. All right, without further ado, are you guys ready to taste this PZ and J? Come on, man. You already know what it tastes like. Come on. <laughs> yeah, but like the, the salt versus organic, it's almost like Mondo Burger versus Good Burger. Have you ever, <laughs> have you ever seen? Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? <laughs> Welcome you know, to Good Burger, yeah. home like, of the Good Burger, can I take your yeah. order? One is that wholesome experience, you know, it's a good family-run tradition, and then across the street we got the corporate can of pumping it full of salts, just giant nugs that taste like nothing, you know? Yeah. So when it comes to your cultivation, are a lot of your genetics at this point in-house, or do you still go out and acquire uh, cuts of different, pe different breeders? Um, I mean, dude, I'm always on the hunt, mm -hmm. you know? Nobody owns cannabis. Okay. Nobody invented the plant. You know what I mean? So like, in my opinion, it's if it's game. out there, it's yours. Okay. And if you can get it, it can be yours too. Mm -hmm. So 
when I release genetics and I release seeds, I don't ever get mad at people for growing them mm -hmm. or people for hashing and winning with them. Mm -hmm. That's just part of the That's game. That's what they're supposed to do. That's what they're supposed to fucking do. Feed your family. You know what I mean? What if they would take an F1? Like, what if they would just take one of their selections from your packs and breed with that? How do you feel about that? You're I at mean, 470. You're good. All right. <clears throat> I'm still reading too hot. Yours? You're probably good. 670? <laughs> Oh, you need fucking a carb cap? Hot dabs himself, huh? We need a carb cap? He used his fucking hand. <laughs> this is hey, old school right here. That's fucking wolf, dog. You don't fucking play around. That's why they call him the big dog. <laughs> <laughs> he's got all these jars. He's like, I'm gonna use my fucking hand. I'm a farmer. <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> it tastes like a peanut butter and jelly, like cracker. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> It's a trip, huh? <laughs> it's amazing how the terpenes and cannabis can mimic food sometimes, man. Yeah, it is an Just when you thought dog. you've tasted it all, you know, there's just something new that pops up every year, it seems like, at this They're point. They're better. I put too much effort into this industry to smoke the same flavors. I don't even like smoking the same flavors at my house. It's this... You, you know what's like cool about the or hash game in this? It's like, we're too much of connoisseurs for them to, like, pull the old bait and switch and the old... The old uh, the, lemon cherry gelato runts trick on us in these the jars. Mylar you know what I mean? Yeah, you can't pull the mylar swap in the mm -hmm. in the jar from the hash maker. You know what no, I mean? No, no. You switch a ruski on me, dude. You know what I mean? We're doing this out of straight labor for love. Labor yeah. for love. Like, what do you mean? I I don't make money all the time. I don't need to. I have the firest terps in the world. Like you said, doesn't matter how much you yield. If it's the firest. You did it right. Yeah, if you're, you're doing, I'm going for good. You know, it's like I'm not. You know, I don't have that much in general anyway, you know, like my farm is a 10,000 square foot farm out of Mendocino County, California. Um, shout out Mendo. Yep, shout out Mendo. One of the most beautiful Mendo. counties in the world. One of the best climates to grow marijuana, especially outdoor. Some of the best genetics in the history of the world have come out of Mendocino County. Big time. It doesn't Big seem time. like a real place when you go up there sometimes because it's just like, there's people, oh yeah, just go across the street, check out those flavors too. And you're like, what? Or just Camaraderie? <laughs> running into the, the people at in Home the, Depot, the you know? Uh, like, I couldn't tell you how many people, like, I've been on the side of the road and I've gotten cuts off of people before. Like, just the, <laughs> the amount of people that grow in Mendocino and the community there, it's amazing. Um, so tell us a little bit about your farm. How long have you been up there in Mendocino? Um, well, my family's been there for four generations. Damn. Um, we built, my family built the cabin in 68 outside of Willits and Pine Mountain. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we're a third generation cannabis farm. So like I grew up, my mom was watering plants and, you know, she, you know, she called them turtles. And so I called them turtles. So I wouldn't go to school saying, I gotta water the plants yeah, with my mom. Water the you turtles know, yeah, water the turtles, you know. That's so, hilarious. Um, you know, I, I grew up <laughs> in the scene. Um, That's sick. You know, there's like pictures of me riding, you know, horseback with uncle, you know, and were your parents everybody. like uh, back to the land movement? Is that kind of what that was back then when people kind of so left 60, the city? Dude, yeah, the property in 68 is so when sick. they came up and built my my other half of my family, the Everett's came out and they, they'd come every weekend from Laytonville to come up to Willits and help us help my other family, my side of the family build the house. Mm -hmm. And um, I have photos and stuff of that and building the cabin. We actually had like the lazy boy or like the sofa outside and the tents and the outhouse. And there's like pictures of my mom milking the goat. Mm -hmm. So you know what straight I mean? from like, the cut. Yeah, yeah. Damn, that's cool. Yeah, um, before I was even thought of, you know what I mean? Long before me, but yeah. Little before. house on the hash prairie. On the hash prairie, yeah. dude. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, then it gives you an appreciation for the land though, right? Yeah, you know. It's a very special thing, man. Mendocino County, there's only 80,000 people in the whole county. Mm -hmm. You know, I have more followers basically on social media than there is in the whole county. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so it's like the, the demographic is a little weird. Um, we do have a lot of farming going on, but we're still fighting the same struggle of, you know, the desensitization and, and everything to all these people that are just like old hicks. Yeah. You know, like the farmers versus weed farmers. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it's just, crazy. it's a really weird thing because they, they, we're not getting our respect yet. Though we're what the a, biggest cash tax contributor in the county, okay, of Mendocino County, cannabis farmers pay more tax overall and we contribute more than any other business or entity or any individual in the county of Mendocino County. Mm -hmm. So, but we don't get the respect that we are due. That needs to be mean? put on a billboard somewhere. <laughs> for real. Yo, you know, right, right into the middle and beginning of the town. Paid for by, by the Terp Templar. By the Terp Templar, right? <laughs> uh, like seriously. This is, know, a, yeah, we have to have the vision millions for it to come of true. dollars to Mendocino. You know a what month. the Terp no. Templar is cool for too is like, 
all right now we're using our advertisement and we're all doing something and we're like going raw 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 in our own angle and it's all fingers going like this yeah terp templar closes the fist and we come together then we have the power of ourselves to educate the consumers to be able to make a terp templar shelf in all these shops so then when people come in they can go well where's the terp templar shelf yeah see what i'm saying versus like we're all going like well, where's the third gen family or where's the moonshine yeah. or where's the real deal shelf or where's like you know yeah. but like what we need to be working on is like who are we all supporting so we can all come together and tell the world what they need to support yeah. and these are the folks and why right yeah. that's kind of where i'm at right now is like come and together. that is super hard yeah. well know? that's camaraderie like you have in norcal like i was talking about you go up there and the camaraderie is there seems like that's like a worldwide kind of camaraderie and to see where it started out and to where it is now if you're not really making the movement to establish what the future is going to be, there's not going to be a spot for us in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's that's some power moves. Yeah, that's I like easy. that idea. It's almost like um, an official seal of approval. So when you see that sticker, you know it's going to be good. You can trust these brands. And you know you're supporting good people, you know? It's not just another faceless corporation. Um, where you're Helping some guy buy his fifth house yeah. in Hawaii I mean, or yeah. something like that. You know what I mean? This yeah. is That's what we want to have is, you know, because the people, there's craft, and there's corporate, right? Yep. And then what they've done now is corporate has blurred the lines between craft and corporate. So we have corporate craft. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's hard for the consumers, the individuals to decipher between the wood grain and the real individual, mm -hmm. the stand up, you know, family man, family farm, the, 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 the people you want to support and the, the fake wood grain. Yeah. You know what I mean? Who, who, who is, has Vinyl. all this bottomless pocket yeah. and can just put out all this propaganda and you just soaking it up and you're believing everything they put out and there's just paper and, and you know, product everywhere. So it's just too easy not to just be sucked into it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like you just become part of that because it's just convenient. Yeah, then, you know? and that's the issue is convenience. It's the same thing with America in general. It's the laziness and the convenience factor that leads to these issues. You yeah. Know? Well, so they the, want to mass produce with the people's cheap, IP that they've quick, stolen. Yeah. And whoever <laughs> markets the most is they're who they're going to be familiar they're with. They go you know? there, but yeah. you know. So that's that's why, why we have this. We're doing the education right this now, is right? Huge education, and thank you so much for having me, guys. You know what hey. I mean? This is a big deal that we're uh, we're we're talking about. This is right? the first time Brandon has ever been to San Diego, and it was to come through the Raws and Evolution Studios, Jeez. sit that's down it. with his flavors, and tell you fucks what you need to know at home. That's so it. let's go and check out another one of your jars. I noticed this one is a different shape than the rest. Hold on, it. hold on. I came for my Raws and Evolution pouches for pressing them. You hear that, Dave? He came here for the bags, <laughs> and we <laughs> we roped his ass in I for this set. Yeah. <laughs> People didn't even know these cameras were going to be set up, but they got me. But we got his ass. How bad do you want these bags? Shout yeah. out Rosin Evolution. Really we all done. use his products. Uh, most award-winning company in the history of the cup uses his products. So that should tell you something. It's always quality you can yeah. count on with Rosin Evolution. Rosin Evolution, baby. So this product that we're about to try was also made with Rosin Evolution, and this jar is different from the rest. It looks like it has two consistencies on the inside. What? It says this is a thummies. Thummies. You want to tell us what a thummies baby? is? What the hell is yeah, that? so thummies Oh, is... shit. Oh, we got Gooper, huh? Yeah, it was on the side a little oh, it's, bit. It's it up. Yeah, I'm a fucking <laughs> idiot. <laughs> we'll get him a fresh one off. We, we goop yeah. him. No, this is good. All this right. is good. It's going to look awesome on camera. So if you pull up the QVC cam, we'll show everybody exactly what we got. So this this thummies, it looks like it's a ring around, so it's two different consistencies? Yeah, so there's a solventless sauce, and then there's a cold cure ring around the outside. Is so, it uh, two different strains or the same strain? Same strain. Cool. So same strain, two consistencies. So you get yeah. to experience the same exact strain from the same harvest, same batch. Yep. Yeah, in yeah. two different ways. And there will be subtle differences in the taste. Obviously, the texture is different. But the taste, too, the terpenes change depending on how you cure them. It's like bourbon. It's like Jim Beam, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you'll get some different notes on each of them. So being able to, you know, try them separately and then combine them to get that louder flavor, you're probably going to have a really good experience with it. It lets the consumer decide too. You can either go straight for the center, you can get that ring, or you can go straight for the outside, or you can mix the two. What are you going to do? I'm going to go from the outside in. I see you're some You're going to get stuff. a mix of two? Yeah, because you get the ac extra cured stuff on the outside, the crust that's got some different terpenes. Then you got the cold cured, and then you got that juice right in the like center. Like dip and dab, yeah. Goddamn right. Yeah, yeah that's that beautiful. That looks fire. Yeah, oh, you right? can see it. So the inside ring is uh, almost like a Hershey syrup consistency. 
um, and then it's sugaring at the bottom. It has like um, kind of a textured layer. The outside is a beautiful like white butter, super soft. How tedious is it to package stuff like this? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yep, doesn't sound like a <laughs> Oh man. Boom, boom. Yeah. So that should tell you a lot right there, just in his answer to that. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I brought it back to a little bit more of how it's supposed to I look. I actually have yeah. a little help, you know what I mean? And uh, I, I created like the, the kind of like showed how to what I mm -hmm. wanted mm -hmm. and what I did, and then they kind of perfected their own little path on how to do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it doesn't look easy, but at the same time, the presentation was there. I just moved a little bit of the sauce right yeah. off. That's completely separate from the cold carrot, and now it's you know it's a really cool look. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Definitely presentation is on point. And that's a super tedious draw because you have to do it over and over again and make sure that they all look. Don't tip the jar. Yeah. Damn yeah. it. Oh, yeah. And that's the thing is like until we showed up here and you flipped it on I know, the side, just on that this, thing yeah. was flat the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm the fucking <laughs> idiot. Yeah. Bless but his yeah, heart. Um, that's uh, same thing with full melt too. You know, like I was showing my friends how to, to package full melt and, you know, uh, when you have a jar that comes out of the freezer, it gets condensation on yeah, it. Yeah, you gotta wait. And then you gotta wait to sticker it, right? Well, They're my friends left oh, the jar out too long. too long, and the jar is greased down, and so then like we had a bunch of grease, grease jars. So jars. They, they learned how to like, okay, we gotta keep this cold the whole time. Uh, the room was yeah. like, still it was like 50 degrees. They just sat out too sat long. Sat out too long, you know what I mean? But. Um, I just packaged up more and it, we were good to go. Yeah, sometimes on, things grease up and everyone's yeah, gonna be happy anyways. Yeah, at least like it greases. Grease. Yeah, some people want it grease. And yeah. At least it does grease. At least exactly. it does grease, you yeah, know? Like some people are like, is this gonna grease up? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah that shit's greasy. We want that fuck. John Travolta grease. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> For those at home, there's a lot of steps that go into getting this in your hands perfect, especially with full melt. It's like sushi. You have to basically, it has to be on ice, you know? <laughs> Dry ice Everywhere. until it gets to your hands. Yeah. And that's yeah, ultimately the, the, the goal. And, you know, like I said, you know, there's hiccups that happen and learning curves for some folks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, over the years, that's the, the ticket, man. I mean, it, it's harvested wet, chopped frozen, right? Within 20 minutes, it's frozen in the freezer. We're putting it frozen, boom. It freezes for however many hours, and then we're gonna wash it. And then it goes in the dryer, and then it goes back in the freezer again. And then it gets packaged and back into the freezer again. Mm -hmm. And then dry ice and moved in a freezer again until it hits the person's hand. Mm -hmm until they get to grease it down. And that's the ultimate goal. And that's why I don't ever get about the cold cure thing, which is like, my opinion, fresh press is the best. Mm -hmm. Then you can give the fresh press to somebody and let them do that part. Mm -hmm. Let them enjoy that. But you know, the problem is once again, education and getting the people to understand that mm -hmm. they can Whip, whip it. it up themselves. But that used to be the tech and that you, you didn't want anyone fresh. to know. It used to and be the it, tech. It used yeah. to be like, hey, you can't tell like anyone about that. Yeah. Yeah. You can't let them know you don't can know whip that it you up. just mix it up with a whipper, you know yeah, what I mean? Damn. And then you're good to go. You can't know? be telling people those yeah. secrets, bro. You gotta take it behind the curtain. Yeah. Hold on a second. Wizard of Oz. Do you presume to criticize the great Oz? You are. Grateful creatures! <laughs> What'd you do? I turned on my cable box. <laughs> the fuck? No, seriously though. So now, you know, like, the education is getting there. More people are wanting fresh press right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I want fresh press. I'm like, well, about time. You know, like, people come by and talking to you about hash now. Mm -hmm. It's like, or of rosin. You're like, you know, I want some hash. And you show them the hash. No, no, I want the rosin. You're like, do you smoke a lot? And they're like, heady. You can tell. You're like, the rig. They got their shit. You know, their little pelican. You know, you're like, dude, brother. You smoke a lot of rosin. <laughs> you really are the guy that needs to be smoking hash. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And well, uh, I just uh, don't know how to, uh, I'm comfortable and it uh, it goes chalky on me. And uh, well, you just aren't educated that much yet about it. And it's okay. So I lace them up with some knowledge and some game, send them away with some full melt. They come back wanting more. That's what a real you plug know? does though. It puts his people on game. You know, you're teaching your people how to properly engage with the product you're creating, so that they could teach people properly. And you're not big, but you're not big leaguing them. You're big homie in them. Yeah, not big dog in them. You don't want to no. big league them. You know what no. I mean? You you're don't want to big homie in them. You're just like, yo, dog, bad. this is how you do it. This is really what you want to smoke, and this is why. And this, and check this out. Smell this. Taste this. Yada yada yada. And and people really love that. Mm -hmm. Educating them, helping them out, showing them, giving them something. That's why do you 50 got 50 push-ups. Get a gram. You know what I mean? Like, That's why you got more people than Mendo following you. No, I appreciate it, brother. All right. You know, like you're just putting people on game. You're teaching people. It's people appreciate that. They do. Yeah, they do you know? Yeah.
It's the authenticity, you know? He, he's mean. No, 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 he's not mean. He's just teaching you. <laughs> he's letting you know that that's, that's what that is. No one was going to say it. They were saying it smelled good. Muffins. So what's muffins? What's the lineage on that? Covalo, Blue Kush, and OZ. Damn. So Covalo Blue Kush is like an old school clone that we got from Covalo, which is a Minnesota County. Yep. Um, which I don't think it was the blueberry because back then, back a long time ago, there was like some Covalo strains were like, you know, some there was it was like Big Red Covalo mm -hmm. Blue Kush. There was like blueberry. There was a bunch of like Covalo had some cool stuff over there. You know what I mean? Even the Jaw Goo. Oh, and dude, I've stuff. grown Jago before. Yeah. That shit is crazy. Yeah. It grows almost like a vine, like a grapevine. Yeah. It wants to grow sideways. It's the most purple weed ever. Yeah, and it's purple super triked and out. Crazy yeah. triked out, yeah. That came come from Camp Cool Farms, CCC Farms in Kovalo. Uh, Jago, um, yada, yada, yada. They used to have um, Dan Sky and Nico Escondido and all these guys come out and do like uh, videos and shit of their farm because they had a big old legal 9.31 program grow, 99 oh, planter damn. way damn. back in the day. Back in the day. Yeah, zip tie program. <laughs> and so they'd have everybody come out and, you know, it was cool. They were, uh, they were big time. The good old days back when weed was fun, but you'd still go to jail really fast for it. Cobalt you know? is a wild place too. That's a, okay, it's at 700. All right, I'm at six. I'm gonna go down a little bit more. Yeah, I'm gonna give this a 550. Last time I hit it too hot. Is there a temperature that you like people to consume your hash at? Yeah. You know, all the little the little pointer machines and shit, bro, are all different. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. kind of, you have to kind of use your little temperature gauger and kind of figure out where your zone is. Because mm -hmm. I like to hit my melt at about like 470. Yeah, melt, you definitely have to go in lower. You know, you know but. <clears throat> yeah, these things, the Predator, it, it calibrates a little bit I'm smoking a lot different. more melt than these days than everything else. Do you notice that melt gets you higher than rosin? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, and that's what I try to tell the guys too when they're when I'm telling them, oh, it's a different high. It laces your eyes up. You're eating it out. It's the high you're chasing. It's a it's full the body bucket. high. It's the full body high. It's the one that you used to get high like. It's when you, you know what I mean? It's that high school high. It's that, that's what hash is. Yeah, you know? that's super stony. Takes over your eyes high. Like almost like an edible high, but you're just smoking hash. Let's smoke some melt next. This shit almost tastes like a cologne, right? This is. Very floral and fragrant. It's like a Dracol Noir or however the hell you say Dracol it. Dracol Noir. <laughs> huh. Right? Yeah. Like a blue muffin almost. Totally different yeah. from the P, B, and Z. I taste the blue. Yeah, right? Definitely taste blue or in there. PZ and J. <laughs> it's like the beginning. Pastry-ish, yeah. you know? It's like almost like a blue raspberry flavor. So is this one uh, bread in-house? Huh? Was this bread by you? Um, yes. Yep. And then you pheno hunted it, obviously. And you do you keep this one Emerald Cup first place? We beat Ati Hash with this one. Really? And the pink lemonade. Do you know what year? 2017, the no biggest shit. hash competition. The last year of the metal. <laughs> last year. It was the at the time it was the largest hash competition in the world. Yeah. So it, it was, was fire like, for uh, a while. Well, it's like you came through with fire terps, and all of a sudden that's where the fire terps were. So if you wanted to get fire terps, you had to go to the Emerald Cup. That's yeah. what the word on the street was in San Diego. And I'm like, dude, if I want fire terps, I need to go to the events in NorCal and find the people that are creating the best flavors in the world. And I need to bring them down to San Diego yep. and show people that fire is available and they just need to spend money on it. And they're just like, yeah, no, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> I I'll go up there, fuckers, you pieces of shit. <laughs> Man. Man, yeah, I like fire disconnect. terps. There's a lot of fucking hash makers in NorCal, you know, and most of the consumers are down in Southern California, but they don't necessarily know what it takes to bring new flavors into the market. Like breeding and pheno hunting takes a lot of sacrifice because you don't know how much you're gonna have to go through to find your keepers, correct? Well, okay, I'll walk you through the steps, right? Mm -hmm. of, of selecting something or breeding something and then selecting something. So, you have to do a cross, it takes three months, okay? Then you have to select from that cross, which takes another four months, okay? And then that's seven months. Then you have to grow that selection <clears throat> out for another three months or so to even get enough clones off of it to, to even fill a space, yep. okay? And so you're talking about three right months, now? and that's talking, you know, you're at like a fucking over a year, yep. right? And you only have maybe about a hundred clones. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so now you need to take that thing and you need to grow those hundred clones out 
and then fucking pull off of those 100 clones and multiply those 100 clones at that point. So then you're talking about a year and a half mm -hmm. yeah. to be able to fill a sizable space. And actually have some for have the public. Something. Yeah. And that's if it's good and other people find it as good as you do because it's usually just your selection because you're not going to let people know and see it and be like, hey, this is my new secret fire flavor. Yeah. You're like, well, no, I need to come correct with this shit before, you know. Before you come out and just ruin what you're trying to work on. Yeah. Exactly. You, know, you, can, you can easily just sabotage yourself trying to fuck, come out too early prematurely and talk about some shit that you're trying to do mm -hmm. and, and just shoot yourself in the foot. You yeah. know what I mean? But have fruition. a bad crop. And that's what, yeah, assuming there's no bad anything Inclu happening Assuming the there's no bad anything, oh, anything or no slowdowns or hiccups. Yeah. And, you, you know, know, and so. So, yeah, knock it on is, wood. It is, it is a lot. Um, and that's why when you know you see people out there and they're like, hey, you know, I got this flavor and next week I got another bag and next week I got another bag. You're like, oh, pump the brakes, dick dancer. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You fucking slow down there, bucko. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you know, and I know, and we know, I know you, I know, you know, we know. You know what I mean? We all know. Yeah. We all know. People in the know. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Most know, of those beans like, are never going to hit the earth. Yeah. <laughs> Ever. Yeah. You got a cool collection, though. <laughs> Baseball cards, bro. Yeah. You never sell those things. Come on. So yeah, no. Um, uh, I got a lot of baseball cards. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's 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 a weird thing, you know. So when you see these flavors, these are all different flavors, you know, like. Well, yeah. So what are some of the this ones takes you're so most much time. I want to say, say, you know, let's hit some GAC, some Z, of course, some of that full melt, the pink lemonade. There's the GAC. So what's the GAC? GAC is actually an unknown plant. Damn. Unknown. This is all fire. And um, what do you usually do for your micron selections when it comes to packaging your product? Do you like a full spectrum of kind of like a more 70 to 149, or do you kind of pull it down? This one is a 90U First pull, isolation. 90, 90, yes. So this we, is the best of the best. Yeah, the best Creme of the best. de la creme. If and we're starting these. to put a pull one, pull two in, but um, yeah, we've been just, we've just been doing this. Yeah, you know, some other people one. will take some of the other stuff and they'll press it themselves, but like, we're heart. taking the cream off the crop. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like, and mm -hmm. offering it to you, you know, it's not yeah. easy to offer the 90, a lot of 90 doesn't even leave the fucking house. <laughs> yeah, that's the head stash. You know, and there's like, you know, the, the hash is kind of a cool thing, right? Like. Mm -hmm. We have a small farm, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? The, the, the garden that produces full melt is about 3,000 square feet. And we have a 5,000 square foot nursery. <laughs> so we're doing a lot of cloning, selecting, nurturing, breeding stuff up top. And then down below we have three 1,000 square foot tunnels, which is a 20 foot by 50 foot long tunnel if mm -hmm. you're not familiar. The proving grounds. That, that's in that, and there's nine beds, so nine garden beds. So I have nine Sorry. 50 foot long beds that I fill with flavors. Yeah. And we're trying to consistently nice. put them in, pull them down, put them in from the nursery. And so we have a consistent flow. Now, I feel like I have a good amount of flavors. A lot of people don't have that much flavors. It's hard to consistently mm -hmm. have terps, right? Mm -hmm. That's why they all put in the weird stickers and playing that weird the game. Mylar game, yeah, the Mylar game, yeah, the branding game. So, game. It's rough um, in San Diego. <laughs> it doesn't take much to sustain a brand for hash, you know, right now. And there's a lot of room for growth. We're the fastest growing segment in cannabis is solventless. It's like the organic food movement um, years ago. Mm -hmm, you know, absolutely. it's just, it, it's exploding. Mm -hmm. And just like how organic food is, that's where we're at. We're like the smallest sliver of the pie, mm -hmm. but we're the fastest growing. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Yeah, solventless yeah. pins are up 400% on the fucking charts this last year. Mm -hmm. And that's just the people that found good pens that don't, don't, don't leak. Who the yeah. fuck, how many fucking <clears throat> dork companies are making rosin pens anyway? And how many companies, you know what I mean? like, a lot of them so don't even it, produce it, they're just buying rosin from another company. You know what I mean? Else is Who's selling my rosin pens? Biting this dude's yeah. fart bubbles and fucking, you know, and putting fart fart bubbles. Yeah. Yeah, it's a human, human centipede of uh, yeah, It's a human centipede <laughs> of vape pens here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Come on, man. You know? uh, Sarah, yeah. will you pull up the camera so we can show everybody at home this gack? So this is a 90U isolation pool and then he squished it. So this is fucking the creme de la creme like we mentioned. Um, how would you describe the profile on this? It's almost like grapey, but with like- Strawberry puree. Like a muffled, yeah. yeah. Or like a- Oh yeah, it is sweet like I call puree. it the new fruit. Cause it's just kind of like a different, I can't put my finger on it type of thing. <laughs> so I just kind of thank you big dog. No problem. It's super, uh, like a fluffy consistency too. Like yeah, some looks, batters are like hard when you cut into them, but like, it's super soft. Looks like that marshmallow puff. Wow, this is awesome. I'm glad we made you sit down on camera because now I get to smoke all his hash today. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, um, 
the hash market, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, right now, you know, the market in general is looking really good. Last year, we kind of hit a wobble. There mm -hmm. was a little bit because, you know, we had farmers that were not getting their doing proper that tried to kind of jump in and try to get some fucking hash dork to like save his day. You yeah. know what I mean? A lot of overproduction. Magically fucking, yeah. And so there was a little bit of overproduction that kind of threw it a little blump, blump, blump. Mm -hmm. But then it just went right back up. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then this year, cause face it, you know, like there's not all those farmers got taken care of fairly last year. And so some of these farms are not going to give when the price is up for the peas. Mm -hmm. They're not giving fresh frozen back to these hash dorks that ripped them off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, the prices are bad. Oh, we're getting this much per da da da. This year, it's an underproduced year in general. Okay, where's the where's the flood? Number two, you know we're going in October right now. Where was all? Where's it all at? And then we're talking about where's the fresh frozen at? Mm -hmm. So that so I'm like looking around like. People that grow fresh frozen and make this product that we make, mm -hmm. we grow specifically for what we're doing. Resin farmers. You know? Mm -hmm. And then uh, I can count on a couple <clears throat> hands who's doing that. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like, okay, really, where are we at right now? Yeah. So when people, when the middle donkey comes around and talks, telling me this and that, this <laughs> and that, you know what I mean? I start telling them, hee haw, hee haw. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what I start telling them, you know? I'm starting so. to kick rocks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I guess like 70% of the licenses didn't get renewed this year. So and there you go. There's and the overproduction. Sun grown that cultivation, 70 plus percent of sun grown cultivation did not get renewed this year. And sun grown cultivation pushes the whole industry. Mm -hmm then where are we at as an industry? Mm -hmm. We are skyrocketing through 2024 and the middle donkey can hee-haw on down the road. Looks you like know a lot mean? of brands won't be able exactly. to be re-upping. <laughs> Look out for their new strain this fall, hee-haw. Hee-haw, hee -haw. <laughs> coming to stores near you, brother. The exclusive directly after Megaphone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Wow, I just touched my thumb with that guard right after I turned the flame off and it didn't even, it wasn't even hot. Shout out Mamba Guards. Shout out Mamba Guards. We always test them after you're heating up. Look, you can pick it up right by the hot end and it's not going to burn you. Look at we that, save yeah. our days multiple times all day. Save my Shout thumb out right Mamba now. Guards. Mamba For guards. a discount code, use hot dabs to save 10 or 20%. I can't remember what it is. Hey, but you're going to get a discount. Tell your friends. Hot That's dabs, good. Mamba Guards. Give me one. You know how many fucking arm burns I got from Yo. reaching over one of them? Oh, wrist yeah. burns when yeah. you just reach too far? Yeah. yeah. We've all been branded before by a blazer torch. Yeah. We're all part of the blazer cult. The blazer cult. Yeah. <laughs> brand your ass. Blazer hey, what's in your torch? You better brand your ass. Don't be a pussy. That and banger burns? <coughs> super mellow, huh? It's really I nice. It's yet. super smooth. I'm excited. You better start smoking, pussy. Yeah, smooth. It's you at 720, I mean? dog. Mellow. I'm not going to disrespect it. I'm just kidding. I'm Don't disrespect your turps. Now, what's your decision? Why don't you make solvent-based extracts? Why did you become a solventless hash maker? Um, you know, in 2012, when we first entered the first competition we entered, we won. And we won <laughs> with hash that my dad made. No shit, Pops, shout yep. out Pops. Pops made it in a trash can with a rake. <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't give up his tech. Hey, Pop tech. Yeah, we went down with a fucking, he went down and got a fresh rake. One of them hard ones, you know? Oh, hell and yeah. Whoosh, 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 and we just threw it right through the bag. And then we dried it under the HPS bulb. Damn. Right, yeah, right under the light bulb like that. Just That's like why you love them, bro. <laughs> <laughs> We're air drying to the, you know what I mean? Hey, yeah. air dry How is quickly did you get that, I mean, after that, it was just kind of like, okay, well, we won. And it was cool and everything. We're still make we made BHO. I remember back in the day I we, used to we, get your diamonds. We, yeah. yeah, we had hella high extracts. And oh, I don't. Yeah, we had a yeah. company called Hella High Extracts. It's super mellow. It was just like, it wasn't my thing. Like I'm not a chemistry dude. I'm not like this gasoline dude. It spooked me. You know what I mean? And I was just kind of like, ah. Your houses blow up. Bah. You know, I seen my buddies get burned. I seen shit go on, and I was just like, no, nah, you know, it just spooked me, bro. I had to buy this explosion proof fan and shit. And that's why I was just like, ah, you know. And, and dad bought a rake. Yeah, my dad was like, we were winning with a rake, rake, bro. You know what I mean? About to rake up the game. We were winning with the rake, bro. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I don't know, you know. And so we just kind of went with that. And then. Does Pop still have the rake that you won with? 
I don't um, use it for the road, but yeah. <laughs> hey, it's putting in work. That's a good race. I think it's still out there. It's not too cocky. I think it's still out there, yeah. But yeah, no, the uh, I got third, you know, and the other fellows beat me. My other two friends, uh, Beasel. No shit. Uh, yep, and then fucking Beasel went on to just continue making BHO. And, Dorian. Yep, Dorian. Killing it, yeah. And then I, uh, cool. I went on to um, just keep doing water hash. Basically, I kind of just stopped doing it. I kind of, you know, was just like, nah, you know. And you then, can have that. I'll yeah. do this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you found your lane. You stuck to it. We were just making hash, though, dude. You know, oh, I wasn't tell you being story. squished. There was a shop in SJO, named SJO, in in San Jose nice Organics, name. and it was like this fucking, this uh, want to dunk that for me? Yeah. Thank you. It was this. It was this cool little shop where they sold. Uh, before cookies, they mm -hmm. sold burner would go in there and do little drops and advertise and go in there and like and and he'd do a little drop and he they had a line out the door that never stopped. This hmm. place I'm talking like at 40 people in line all the time, bro, hmm. because it was just cheaper prices out the door, boom, 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 and they bought our hash. Yeah, that's where I need to be. And that's where I need to be. So like we got in with them and we started slinging hash to them and it was like we started it. We were I was pumped. Hash used to be fifteen dollars a gram, and we were like, we got it up to thirty-five bucks. And I was, was like, it full metal? I came with branded Boo Boo's bubble. And we, yeah. we got it to thirty-five bucks, and then I, it was it was fresh frozen, mm -hmm. and I'm like, and we're super proud. It was a fire, bro. Like, you know, OG Eddie and Blackberry Kush and things we were washing at the time, right? Um, and it was cool, but. I realized that if I'm washing whole plant, I need to get more money. Yeah. I need more than 35 bucks a gram. So then me and Full Flavor and everybody, we all jumped our prices. Shout out Kobe. We jumped our prices. What year was this? Uh, this was 2013. Damn. Dang. The original price yeah. jumper. Shout yeah. out 2013. Full 2013. Before Sour we, Waves was raising prices. Yeah. Raising prices. <laughs> we got we got uh, we got it up to 50 bucks, and we were still selling 45 microns, 73, 90, Dang. 120. And so Using they'd all buy it. all the microns, but the firest ones were the most, and then we'd break it down yeah. in price points to the yeah, other ones. Yeah. And then in like 2016, rosin became the big deal. And I remember I just fucking um, I, we started squishing rosin and it was just like blowing up, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that's when I had all these pucks that I had saved. I had a whole 15 cubic foot freezer of pucks that were like n not white or not good hash or wasn't good enough to sell under the full melt and air dry, microplane and air dry. Yeah. So I had, and uh -huh. that's when I was like, I'll air dry this and I'm going to press it and I'm gonna have fucking hash so rosin. rosin. And I tried it and I had fucking pounds, bro. And that's when I was just like, the oh, dude, more than you. You know what I mean? Come through, dump truck, mom. Fucking just loading me up. Making it know? rain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking <laughs> rosin, God. Yeah, oh, that's so, the best. Yeah, that's like when I found out about BHO in like tw 2011 or 2010. I just had all these packs that were just like sitting there, just like these aren't good. Like this isn't gonna be good. These aren't growers. And then you blast them, and you're like, oh, wow. All the purples gold. just immediately. You're just like, oh my god. Like what the hell? Like gold. I just like quadrupled. Oh, this is killer. Yeah. Thank How long you. is the shelf life? How long do you think he can store hash and it'll still be fine to press or smoke? I mean, I won the Emerald Cup with four-year-old fucking hash in the freezer. So you think it stays good as and long as it's frozen? I mean, as Pretty long much, as you yeah. treat it right and seal it up right, and you fucking put it away right, you can get it to go a long time. I've never mm -hmm. got it. I've never had it in there quite longer than that. Yeah, you know, four years or so. And so I'm we'll washed. say four years. Yeah, material lasts even a long time, and you can wash the material. Not to say that it doesn't change a little bit. Yeah, but I'm saying you know like fresh frozen material. Yeah, stuff yeah, will mature. Know, like, Maturing mat happens, yeah. but at the same time, like, vintage. Yeah, vintage. I Is remember vintage. I think, yeah, imagine if I had some product like so look we have muffins yeah we have pink lemonade and we have the GAC. those are first second um in emerald cup 2017 right Oxy, i think beat the GAC with this pink mm. lemonade and then i beat uh, the, the pink lemonade with the muffins and then Damn. fucking so like these are these are fire these are good varieties you know what i mean this is this is good stuff but like at you know and all the branding's on point. All these fucking Yeah, they all look awesome. Sticker Farmer, dude. Oh, yeah, dude. Sticker, Sticker farmer. farmer fucking plugged the hell out of these Sticker jars. Sticker Farmer, dude, yeah. And Sticker Farmer for everything. Like, I mean, they're just, they, whatever I need, like, they're Sticker just Sticker Farmer like, the world. Yeah, dude. And they're cool, man. They're like, it's local. And like my buddy says, like, bro, 
We're in the hills, man. You're lucky. Like, yeah, I got them right down the road. I'm so blessed, man. And I like to support them. They're in the hill. Yeah. But you got to drive down the hill. Yeah, they're in the hill, dude. They're like right there. Leightonville, <laughs> yeah. Leightonville California. Shout you know, out Leightonville, like, man. Yeah. I lived up there when I first moved out yeah. here. Tell them third gen family sent you. Bang, bang. Boom. Yeah. Tell your friends. <laughs> All right, what's the next one we should go in on? Though? You mentioned the pink lamb, the muffins. Yeah, pink lemon. Um, Caramel rainbow, what's that? Caramel rainbow is like an old school seed that I got. You know, really? straight hit to the sea, yeah. It's super wet. Did you do anything to like make it this nice consistency good. or are some strains just wetter than others? Yeah, you know, um, I mean, you know, you yeah, wash, Z, you know. Yeah. yeah, Z is really wet. Um, it's good to mix with. Yeah, you know, uh, you can come up with some nice terpene profiles. Yes, people are mixing stuff sometimes... with disease. It's good to breed with. Yeah. It's good because it's like, like you said, it's wet, but it's also like, you know, if you leave it out, you know what happens with wet when you leave it out? It'll Crest. stay wet, this it, stuff. No, well, it will, but yeah. like, it, the terps are degrading. Yeah, too, right? If you smell them, they're evaporating. They're evaporating. Right? If yeah. you're driving down the road and you smell the weed crop, yeah. In the air, that's the terpenes evaporating bye bye. off of the plant. Yeah, that's a good that's one. That smells amazing. Yeah, what do you think about it? Want to go in on that yeah, one? you want to do this Let's one? Let's go. This is the Starburst OG. I was checking it out. Um, this one wasn't bred by you, correct? This is this like no, the staple cut? This is from Kosh Tree Mason. So oh, this is okay. from Tree Mason. Tree Mason actually made this. He gave me this Starburst OG at Chalice in 20... Oh, that's, sorry, that's my phone here. He's a busy man, um, always yeah. getting calls. That's, yeah. They're looking for the fresh frozen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll turn that off, brother. Um, Sarah, will you pull up this camera, please? But yeah, no, uh, that came from him. He gave it to me, Chalice 2017. 2017. Yep, he came. Dang. We won Chalice, um, and then uh, he gave me that fucking Hey, bro, can you like, win Chalice yeah. with my cut, too? Yeah. <laughs> no, shout out Cash. He's super, super nice, and Looks he fire. grows this amazing batch of uh, grandma's cookies and the starburst og and he's blessed a lot of people with this cut wow it's so soft once again and uh this is first pull 90u yeah he's a very generous dude genuine guy you know what i mean just like uh i can't say nothing you know bad about the dude you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh tree mason for sure you know his hash is quality control his flower is probably my fucking favorite flower. it's amazing <laughs> it is amazing is bro like he gave me some oh, this weekend and it was fucking insane. Like it was insane. Yeah, it has a really good smell to it. You could smell the strawberry coming through on the Starburst. There's a lot of gas that. to mm -hmm. it. Like you, how would you describe that? I got like a maple fucking gas, like a maple twist gas. Yeah? Yeah. It's like way stronger than I thought it was going to be than sweet. I mean, Starburst are my Because it's a 90U isolate, ones. so some of those flavors can turn out totally different, yes, right? exactly. When the you start heads. to break them down in the heads, um, you do get, like you said, isolate. You know, you're getting these But certain... I smelled it after you opened it up. Mm. Yeah, once you stir it up, too, it's yeah. just even crazier. It yeah, is. That's, loud that's what I do at like competitions. I stir the jars because you really bring all the expressions out when you could have to grade so them. What do you think so far, man? It's amazing. Terps good. I'm stoned as shit. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, honestly, yeah. I'm high as fuck right now. It's like I'm gonna I wanna smoke as many as I can, but I'm just like really fucking ripped right now. I'm well, like, you're gonna dude, have to keep going. Like, you're not about to stop. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm gonna smoke as many as I can. Like I was like, these are all clash. fire. Hell yeah, dude. I thought this was gonna be easier than doing the hot dabs, but honestly, I'm fucking stoned. So no, yeah, I'm a lot of people high. pull prematurely to get a lighter color so it doesn't pack that much of a stony effect, but clearly you take your plants to maturity. What do you look for when you harvest? Um, yeah, I take my plants to maturity. Uh, it's cause I mean, I'm not, if you know what you're doing with your fertilizer and your water and you're not, you know, cooking them and you're not freezing them and shit, then your, your color is going to be good. Mm -hmm. You can go the full distance. The color is definitely it's just good. An uns, it's a sucky fucking grower that has to cut his shit early to make it white. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, and that stuff doesn't get you high. Yeah. Come on. Dude. You know, and this you stuff know. gets you high. And this is why I got, like, you know, this is a guy that grows weed to get you high. They makes hash to get you high. That makes rosin to get you high. And you're like, oh shit. Like we're going to be getting high. This is somebody that smokes his own yeah. stuff. Like, this is like, yeah. I'm... That said too, like some plants timing wise, Skittles is a fast motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Oh Skittles yeah, Skittles is quick, right? And you know the what sucks is it's like a slow clone. 
and, and slow then, veg, <laughs> and then you flip it to flour, and it's like whoop, and yeah. then finished, yep. quick. You know, you're just like it goes whoop, boop, done. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like whoa, damn, already okay, cool. You know, you yeah. made up for it. It's super fast. Yeah, so, the plant some, doesn't want to be alive, and I feel like at the end, it's just like I've had enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it just throws itself, but it, it tastes awesome if you harvest it right, enough. like at that early, at the perfect yeah. time. Yeah. I fill in a tunnel three times a year. <clears throat> you don't think it's going to be different from each time of the year I pull? Too? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You, you know, even. You I know, mean, the pressure from, density. From, from the yield or from this or from the, the terps. terps. Yeah. You know, all these things are just. You guys. You know, yeah, exactly. It's just you, you're, you're deal dealing with so many different variables. And so to Absolutely. try to control these the best you can for the most part all the time, that's the struggle. That's why I have a saying. It's called it ain't easy growing greasy. No. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Trademark. Steal that. Don't yeah, steal that. Put it on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You ready to rip this? Yeah, let's get it, man. Uh, this is the Starburst OG. I'm already stoned as hell. Let's get it. Nice fluffy fucking. Beautiful soft, fluffy man. consistencies. Um, oh, I can't even remember what I was in the hands. So, yeah. That 90, it really gets you high. Yeah, it does. But all the flavor is just right there too, which is really nice. Do you have a specific time of the year? Like, do you like your full term pulls or like your fall pulls when it's like most natural to the, the plant cycle? They are the best in my opinion right now. The best of the best resin is coming down in the fall. It's just the natural, like you said, cycle. And um, the temperatures are harder for a lot of people to control for sun grown, even in green or, or even in, in uh, uh, indoors, you know, for a lot of people, they have struggle in the heat if you're in a hot climate, you know. So, if you're talking about like, you know, unless you have just the perfect <laughs> dial of rooms and shit, you know, I mean, some people have Ferrari, you know, setups and, and stuff. They're, still and yeah, they're not really complaining <laughs> about nothing but their power bill, but yeah, you know, but yeah. like if you're in the mother nature and you manually control these aspects of your grow, it's that's the tough part. It's yeah. definitely, and that's difficult. why it's like. A, What's a grower? Is a grower somebody that goes and fucking leans on all their equipment? Or is the grower the guy that fucking knows what the plants need and how to control the situation the best they can to grow yeah. the best? Food? Yeah. To me, that's what it's tougher sun growing growers got it. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, for sure. You're dealing with the elements, you know? It's creating its natural defenses, keeping them healthy so that the elements don't affect them, so that the bugs don't affect them, keeping yeah. your place clean. It's like anyone can keep a clean room clean, but can you clean up? Keep a outdoor clean. Um, yeah, <laughs> this fucking guy's stoned as shit. See, what see, what about like uh, the stresses? Do you think it like it's actually better for resin farmers that get to deal with like those temperature fluctuations and like kind of lo a little bit of stress brings out more resin? D do you believe that? So yeah, there there <laughs> is. I mean, I mean, I believe that to a certain extent of stress, right? Yeah, like, you don't want to fuck them up, go kick them, yeah, yeah. <laughs> beat um, the shit out of them. Yeah, but um. Have you ever done anything like leave them in darkness for like a whole day or two at the end? In the indoor, yeah, for sure. Damn, that one's super smooth. Yeah, I kind of get like the maple gas notes. <laughs> I think the resin heads get juicier when you do that darkness. What? 48 to 72 hours. Oh, I forgot what we were talking down. about. The old trade secret. <laughs> yeah. This guy's high. So you think they get uh, sweeter, <laughs> juicier heads, like bigger, like not as weathered? You know that membrane I'm talking about. So you, you think they're easier to collect? You know, it's like it puts the lotion on the skin. You know, yeah. I put you in the hole and I, it puts the lotion on the skin, or it gets the hose again. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. You would have that soft skin for me. You know yeah. what I mean? I put you in the dark. I ain't gonna turn the light on you for a few days. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you, make sure you soak up all the juices and fucking get them nice and juicy. That's right. what I feel mm -hmm. like. That's why I've always been like, you know, come on, man. Let's, crawl hit a fucking, out. let's hit a Z or a. Uh, I think lemonade. we need to end it with the one and only Z. Z. Z? Yeah, let's go I think Z. We have go. to, right? I've been this, waiting for that this one. This is literally one of the reasons me and Sam started making hash was because we were buying <laughs> so much from you down at the Compassionate Heart that we were going broke. Like, <laughs> And we took our name because you used to always call shit the real deal. Yeah, it's the real deal, baby. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> and here we you, are. So yeah, we have to. Me that. You got to wind it out with a Z. So these, this, like, once again, the packaging is fucking hilarious. It's, <laughs> it's a leprechaun with a rainbow coming out, and it says "Slurp on my turp." Oh. Uh, if anybody you know, Big Dog, that's one of his sayings. So this is uh, holy shit. I know, man. I saw it earlier. Holy I was just like, shit. Yeah. All right.
I'll pull yeah, up the camera fucking... so everybody at home can see how beautiful this is. Anytime I go to Ego Clash, I just gotta bring home a head stash as yeah. much as I can, because I'm just like, all right, I, I can fly with a zip. I'm this. okay with this. <laughs> it's so wet. If anybody has ever tried to grow Z, <laughs> it's a it's a passion project, because like he said earlier, the plant is slow and finicky. It's hard to veg. Um, and it's when it's done, it's done, you know? But look how beautiful yeah, it you is when done when to right. Pull it. How, how well you know that plant? Oof, I've grown more Z than anybody. 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 Z most. Z most. Z best. <laughs> Z one and only. You this know smells I mean? so good. All You're, Z terps. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely changed the generations of weed. It, it spurred everybody breeding for Z crosses to try to have the next Z or Z with something else, you know? But nobody has quite found it's another like OG Skittles. OG Kush and stuff, you know? Like, yeah, it's a staple game flavor now. Staple. You know, it's a staple flavor. I, I did a, <laughs> thank you, brother. I did a thing. Um, where, you know, it's like, in a few years in a row, I kind of like brought out a new flavor each year. Mm -hmm. It was like, just boom, boom, boom. And each one, surprisingly, won something in the competitions that I put them in too, mm -hmm. right? And so there was just undeniably, you know what I mean? That it was just like, they were different. Mm -hmm. The rosé, the gap, I remember the, the rose. peach, I remember the those. skittle was there. Peach rings. <clears throat> you know, so all these flavors, people just getting their bells ringed. It was no fluke when we were in running the circuit. You know, yeah. it's been five years since I competed and mm -hmm. we're still the most awarded hash company in the world. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's nice. We have 94 awards. You know what I mean? So it's like. That's crazy. <laughs> like you 94, know, that's nine with a four after. 94. Yeah. The first number is a nine. Five most years, of you that was five born. years ago. Yeah. 1994, a lot of these kids were. He ran out of shelf space. <laughs> <laughs> No, but like, I, that's why the Ego Clash is so important to me too. Cause like, I love competing. Um, the, it, it was so fun to me, you know what I mean? To create a fair platform for everybody yeah. else, you know, like. A lot of people lost a lot of faith in the game once the high times and all the people, you could tell that the six figure people same. Yeah. were just winning all the time. And you're like, fuck man, like, I can't actually compete to do the stuff that I grew up reading about in the magazine to try to do, you know? I went to Amsterdam trying to, you know, be a part of it, and now it's like, as you get older, you're like, dude, I can't compete. Like, it's not it's, fair. It's yeah. not fair. Not fair. It's yeah. Fucking jerks. Yeah, like, so, I got a fucking $100,000 a show. Yeah. What? <laughs> what was some of your motivation behind creating the Ego Clash? You want to tell people what that is? Yeah. Oof, Ego wow. Clash. Sick as fuck event. You know, to, I've, I've talked about this a little bit, but like the Ego Clash started because like I won a lot of awards. Mm -hmm. We won every one, you know, like that I wanted to win. And if I didn't, I placed really good or, you know, whatever the deal was. I was feeling real good. I was feeling confident. But there was some people out there that still made good product, but they weren't competing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I want to beat them all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I wanted it to be a competition where they couldn't say that you had to buy a and ticket. Award. You know oh, what I mean? a ticket, yeah. Either, you didn't yeah. have to pay for an entry. You didn't have to do nothing. So I made it see. so you just showed up and you put your jars out there. The first one was open branded where you showed up with five jars with your name on it, same flavor. And then you battled it out with all the hash makers and hash makers had to sit the fuck down and walk away if they didn't have the good ash. So they had to beef it out. That was the ego clash. That was the original. So, that was yeah. at that house in Santa Rosa? Or that was at the house in Santa Rosa yeah. and Burn Dog and, and Burn Burner and, and uh, Jigga and everybody showed up. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, that yeah. was fun, you know? And um, Burn Dog came back this year too, again. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Shout out Big Burn. It's, it's cool to see him <laughs> come back, you know? But that was how it was spurred. You know, I wanted to have something where it was like, you didn't have to have a booth. You didn't have to do this. Cause people were like, yeah, well, uh, I don't enter. Cause you know, they want 14 grams and uh, you know, a thousand bucks, you know? And well, so you're it's the like, first guy to give them back their hash too. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Hey, you get your jar. If your terps why, aren't good, you'll get them back. That's why it's like, you know, whatever, it, whatever it was, it's like, we don't want your fucking hash. You're not going to pay for an entry. This shit's free. I'll feed your fucking ass. Yeah, and all the food you was You know what free. I mean? You, you might even win an award people. or something. Who mm -hmm. knows? You know what I mean? But uh, you get your shit back at the end. So there's no yeah. reason for you not to come and smoke with a bunch of cool people. Yeah. Come to my place and hang out. Put your ego away mm -hmm. and just come hang out and chill out mm -hmm. and shoot the shit. You the know way what I mean? Like, it should be. Yeah. yeah that's everyone what, just goes to their area and it was accommodating, which was perfect. You know, everyone got to do what they needed to do. You had to put out a couple fires, literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it was just like a good event that you knew that you weren't uh, getting bought out of. Yeah. 
So yeah, thank you. Shout out to the Ego Clash. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. How many have you had at this point? Since 2017. So it's like a six year. Yeah, six year. Too. Yeah. Yeah. This year is gonna be the sixth year. Yeah, yeah and it gets better every mm -hmm. single year, and it's it already expanded overseas. Now we have a Barcelona edition that takes place during Spanibus. That was and cool. And if anybody isn't familiar, what he's talking about is the Ego Clash. It's the biggest underground hash competition in the world, and it's an invitational only. So he deems who is capable of coming to the table with good stuff. But even after like the top 40 or 50 get there, inevitably, usually like 10 or 15 people get disqualified just based off of their jars performance at the event. Then you sit down with like 35 five other hash makers and you have to rip 35 dabs of the best hash in the world and grade it accordingly. And when you try them all back to back to back to back to back to back, to back it gives back, you a good back, back, sense back. of which jars are the best. And then it all is evaluated on a quantitative scale in which they use an online scoring system that they can watch in real time um, which entries are doing the best. And uh, all of the judges are the um, Compared the hash makers themselves. Yeah. The hash makers yeah. themselves, yep. And then it's all added up for a cumulative score and the winners are announced and it, it really is esteemed as like one of the best uh, competitions you can win at this point because everybody knows its authenticity is real. I agree 100%, yeah. It's crazy to think that, you know what I mean? But because we just thought, thought it up on my buddy Lou Dog's couch one day we're <laughs> making hash, but yeah. The you clash know, when, though. When we took it from that house and we took it to that, to the ranch, um, like I took a, a $100,000 note out on my ranch to go throw that party. In to 20, throw in that 2018. party? 2018. Cause and you were doing it all. My plan was, is I was gonna go and there was a dispensary down the road, Emerald Farms at the solar yeah, center. I remember that. And I dropped the seeds there illegally and then have the party over here, mm -hmm. right? And, um, you know, we, we dropped the seeds and everything. It just, it was the whole 2018 legalization year was odd. Was odd yeah, it I mean? was still the, so and, the gray um, area was heavy. Yeah, yeah, and so we so we, we threw our party and everything and um, nobody knows that, but yeah, I pulled a hundred mans out to throw that party. And I, I mean, I, you know, I didn't, we didn't get none of that back, but yeah. you know, after that, the next year I was like, you know what? I need to take sponsors on. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. like, we got to get the sponsors to pay for this because I can't do that again. You know what I mean? Because yeah. everybody was hitting me up like, yo, dude, that was so badass. Yeah, we want to go to the party, yada, yada. And, you know, uh, are you doing it again? You did, did, did. And I'm like, man, you know, if I, I'd love to, but not I like it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's they, what constantly growing an event is. And that's what made it last this long because, the people, you know, because I'd be awkward to go and ask for sponsors for a party you've never even thrown. Yeah, no. You see what I'm saying? So to me, I'm just like, ah, I kind of like, did the old Kevin Costner, if you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. Build a dream. Build a dream, baby. Build a dream. And so I kind of just, yeah. <laughs> I kind of just like built this thing. Next year they said, yeah. And then, then it was like sponsors were wanting to, you know, like, yeah, everybody can I give you some money? Yeah, yeah. And so and shout out to all the sponsors that have ever sponsored the Ego Clash because without anybody uh, uh, sponsoring, the Ego Clash would never be anything. Absolutely. Without the guys showing up and all the homies showing up and everybody being there. It wouldn't be anything. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not my party. It's everybody's party. Yeah, the industry driven. Yeah, yeah. and thrown by. It. And it it's a, a toy drive. <laughs> we haven't even mentioned it's a toy oh, drive. Oh yeah, every single year you bring as many toys as you want. You know, it, it, where do you donate it to? So, it started out smaller, and over the years it's just grown astronomical. Mm -hmm. So this last year we delivered toys to the Native American reservations in Mendocino and Sonoma County. And then the firehouses, um, we did Laytonville, um, uh, Harwood Hall. Um, so, and we did uh, La Familia Foundation and some of the toys even made it all the way back to Mexico. Wow. So we, like the toys stretch really far. We feel like a mm -hmm. 20 foot trailer. Stuff to the brim. Uh, yeah. To the brim, like all the way to the top. You can't even. How many bicycles? There. Bikes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody like, knows I race BMX and stuff and I love bikes and I sponsor BMX kids teams and stuff. And so um, everybody brings bikes and skateboards and the people really go out and try to get the kids cool stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. and, it's really fun because we get our kids in there and we're actually bagging up trash bags. And, um, you know, I meet families at Walmarts and stuff. I'll be mm -hmm. see them in the, in the, in the aisleways and be like, they're, you know, trying to buy their family toys and stuff. You can tell for Christmas, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I'll just be like, Hey man, you guys need toys. 
You know what I mean? And exactly. you know, I could tell, you know what I mean? And I just, oh yeah, you know, they're just reluctant for help. Yeah, yeah. they think you're trying to sell them toys. Yeah, you know, like I'm like, toys in my truck. And then I show up with big old trash bags and they're like, oh yeah. my God. And they hit yeah. us up again next year. Hey, uh, can can my cousins and you know mm -hmm. them that we need you know they have three boys and Heck you know yeah, can, yeah you know absolutely yeah. so that's it's, what it's for because it's just for helping the people man and it goes um to the people in need and mm -hmm. this last year i really wanted to see the faces more so in the past i kind of worked with another organization yeah and this and i'm just we've been working on just getting it out there ourselves because it's the most gratifying <laughs> thing absolutely you know, yeah, yeah. yeah i don't really talk about that, that much faces, but yeah. it's the stuff yeah. you do that makes you feel good yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? it's, it's just that boring back end stuff <laughs> no yeah it's no but that's it's a, cool as fuck it's amazing man. what you're doing we love the that. clash is one of the best events so check it out check out his instagram for the updates on it it's pretty low key though um, all right, you guys ready for this last dab? Heck yeah. It's the Z. Let's go. The original. Z, Z one, one and only. only. Yeah. <laughs> so this Z right here, do you, is it kind of like a mystery lineage? I've heard some people say it's like a sherb. Like there's a sherb in like NorCal that tastes sweet like this, but it's not like spot on to this clone. Um, do you have so, any? So, I mean, there's, the, there's, you know, have you ever heard of the Gas Station Bob story? Yeah, uh, that's definitely have heard of Gas so Station Bob. Me, you yeah. know that, right? This, that's the one that came out of our camp. Um, and then also, you know, have you heard anything about key lime pie? Oh, I love yeah. key lime pie. Have you heard that story? That's, that's the story no, I haven't heard the story, of my but, camp. That's my but it's different. Play. Yeah, so look, if you grow the plants, that's what I'm saying. It's You're different for me, sure. is it the same plant? Yeah. Or are you asking no. me if it's related? They're probably related. They are related. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. That's what I feel. Yeah, for you sure. Know, that's I Jai, and Jai's like, I don't know, but... I grow the plants. Uh, me too. And I see the plants uh, together. They're different. <clears throat> they look the fucking same. Yeah, you know I know I mean? both they're of these girls. But the buds look the same. The buds fucking the 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 the, 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 the serration on the leaf is the same. You know what I mean? They're both green bud. Sherbs Sherbs perk. All all cook is all dark leaf. Okay? That's the only velvet leaf. <coughs> okay? Sherb esque cross, whatever you want to call it in the game. So now if you've heard that story, that's from me, okay? That's my feelings, that's my opinion. Um, it's not facts, you know what I mean? But you heard it here. So it's not a sherb, it's in the key lime pie but family. But is key lime pie part of sherb? Man, these yeah. turfs are fucking you th great. Is it? Yep. Yeah, I, I would it totally is. believe it. Yeah. Cause I've loved key lime pie ever since I had it, but I've had it a very few times cause having a real one is rare. Dave, you don't have any of our key lime pie but here, do you? Ever since I had that oh, from you back you in 2012 it? or 13, yeah. the Skittles has been the best flavor I've ever smoked <laughs> in cash. And key lime pie is super wet, super fast but flowering, squat plant, serrated leaves. You know what I mean? Like I'm not, come on. Doesn't have the same terp. Doesn't but have the does same terp. Key lime pie have a different terp than all the other fucking cookie sherb crosses that were out at the time. See what I'm Absolutely. Saying? It was the outlier. It was the fucking redheaded stepchild. But it was still so fucking fire. So, so either like, Skittles come from the same fucking thing that that key lime pie came from. The same from. source. Just okay. two different outliers. Okay. Yep. Or it's a cross of key lime pie to something else we don't know. Mm -hmm. But either way, I believe that it's related to key lime pie because if you look on the genetics on the galaxy and you look on the deal. Is key lime pie related to sherbet? Yeah. Okay then. Mm -hmm. So, you know. That was amazing. You're giving me a lot to think about. Right? All stuff that I knew, but I didn't know that I know. No, I just never fucking say this shit publicly. <laughs> Who knows how many people will watch this? Who knows? The Z is a beautiful plant and you really have to have a lot of passion for it. And even down to when you consume it, you have to take it at lower temperatures because those terpenes are so volatile, they'll get burned away quick. Yep, you feel it? Yeah. I got, I took it at a perfect temperature though. It was amazing. Yeah, I Long like 480. So good. Yeah, I mean, what is it? We had it since fucking, you know, when well, we brought it out 2014. Yeah. It's been in the hills since 2011. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, so it's we, been we something We brought the you... brand out 2014. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So. About to be your 10 year anniversary. Yeah. A decade? That's fucking wild. How's that feel? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I love the way that the Eagle Clash has uh, continued to develop and looking forward to exactly or anything that you're going to be doing next because seeing 14 flavors, how much did you bring down? It's Hold crazy. On, how many flavors? Flavors? Table, we didn't even but... mention King of Z Hill. He threw the first ever oh, largest yeah, cash so prize tight. hash event at Hippie Hill. Ow! So yeah, it's coming back this next is year, it coming 420. Back? It's going to be on a Saturday. 
Hippie Hill. At Saturday? Casey Hill, yep. Oh, this is going to be good. It's going to be fucking even bigger and even better, bro. You know, now I know the venue. Never been there before. That was now amazing I know what last to year. Expect. Yeah. We're going to make it even way more comfortable. We know to prepare for the Can fucking sun. We're going to have booths. We're going to have fucking shade. SPF. So, yep. Yeah, <laughs> SPF. Well, we, <laughs> might, we might put the PVC up. over the top and we oh, might have shade, shade cloth, cloth. Yeah. Or, or plastic, depending on if it rains. Wait, you're going to light that one? No, you know. We had a great day. So, yeah, we had a good day this last time, you know. So, yeah, the the King of Z Hill was fucking awesome. The largest cash prize in cannabis history. Um, the winners were uh, Have Hash, Hash Muppets, and um, hash. Royal Budline. Yeah, Hash Muppets, uh, Have Hash, and Royal Budline. It was an awesome competition. Yeah, there were some event. beautiful entries. So it went from not sure if you were going to do Ego Clash again to do an Ego Clash. King of Z Hill. And then Ego Clash Spain. Spain, which every is a beautiful year. event. Yeah. You're at a savage, castle. bro. We're not even at a castle. Get, we're not going to get into too much detail. I was about so that. high there, yeah. too. I didn't even get to see the castle because I was just smoking dabs for like. Next time we gotta Five go hours. up the, the silo to the top mm -hmm. of the fucking mm -hmm. silo where the archery tower is. There's an archery tower? Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Dude. Like a guard archer? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's <laughs> like the, the fucking little- I'll bring the crossbow. Yeah. yeah, he kept that thing yeah. on him. And it looks like you keep some thing on you over here, huh? You know, man. <laughs> Self-defense is important these days, You know, everyone. yeah, you know, it's everywhere you go, you know what I mean? I just always gotta keep that thing on me. Yeah. The you heater? Know, you know, you use it. Make sure I got it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Make sure you can big dog a little bit further. <laughs> I just keep that thing on me. You know Sheesh. what I mean? <laughs> so you can look out for the third gen uh, megaphones to be dropping this fall yeah. at all your local retailers. You know is what there, time it what is. else should we look out for? Any closing statements you want to make for the people at home? Man, you know, we have Terpy Van Winkle. You know, I know a lot of people. I got a lot of things going on. I'm mm -hmm. multifaceted on the hill. I got a water hauling company. Pops go, you know, we drip in your lip. You know what I mean? Uh, Cottonmouth Water Hauling, Mendocino County, California. You know, we got the clubhouse. You know, we got the pet store, Clover Dog. Uh, well, my and, favorite yeah. pet store. Thank you, my brother. You know, in Cloverdale, California, we got Clover Dog Pet Supply and Wash. You can come by and watch your pooch, no problem. Sam, um, Small Batch Sam washes his dogs there. I get the treats from there. It's awesome. Dang. Yeah, thank you, man. We got pig snouts and goat hoof and all kinds of cool stuff there. You know, um, the Ego Clash, King of Z Hill, uh, you know, just all, all that cool stuff. I'd really like to touch on um, making sure that we do this Turf Templar, mm -hmm. you know? You talked about it like at an Ego Clash two years ago. Yeah. And we need good. to fucking actually do it. We it's hard getting execute. everybody to actually come together. Yeah. Because there's a lot of, if like you said. we put the call out though. <laughs> The horn the on. bat signal put the bat signal up z signal z signal no. you know <laughs> they'll come you know what i mean yeah. um everybody i've talked to is really uh, interested and 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 stoked on it you know it's mm -hmm. but it has to take everybody's involvement mm -hmm. come together yeah. exactly the, 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 it's not a it's camaraderie not a... around one symbol or one emblem that we can do and how much power we can pull mm -hmm. you know, the energy we pull you know it's mm -hmm. like Who's out there protecting solventless or concentrate anything? Definitely no, no one. Who's no. out there got our best interest? No. It's a race to the Do bottom. Do you notice these high THC comments all the time? Trying to ban Trying uh, to ban. Do you understand yeah. where I'm going? There's only more and more enforcement. Mm -hmm. This the, what, Enforcement. Do you see for Do you plant? see how much like uh they're going after the high THC and then you see how many like uh like where's the booze that's like 100%? Mhm. Mm they but, put put a limit on that. Yeah, you mm -hmm. understand. So we'd be foolish to think that they're not going to try to attempt to come into our realm and tell us about our terps and what we're doing. Whether they're going to attack BHO or gasoline dabs, or they're going to attack solventless dabs, high THC product is what we're talking about, and that's where our issue is because we're producing, uh, you know, seventy percent plus in the THC yeah. product in rosin form. Yeah, yeah, it's like, so, are we going to have to water it down? No, why would we have to? So, know? and then are they going to cap the labs? Do you see what I'm saying? Are, they, are, we, are we getting capped as soon as it goes federal? Or are we having federal enforcement on fucking high THC capped labs? Well, like, and overnight, you know, this is manufacturing a controlled substance. So it's getting people you know on the I mean? like on board. This is hash, so don't let it get you twisted about like what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean, right, you guys? Yeah, yeah, sometimes we get a little loosey-goosey. Water and ice. Sometimes, you know, but hey, it is. 
and it's, it's okay to do, pressure. but we have to be able, be respected. If they're if they're coming after us, dude, you know what I mean, and, and talking about you know uh, bannings. But yeah, higher THC, you can't get over 80% or flower percents it. and stuff like this. It's only the beginning. And so what I'm saying is, it's like, it's only smart for us to talk about this now, to come together now, um, to start working with like-minded individuals now to create this, you know, protection for us, protection, and protection platform is what us, it is. You know? I've seen yeah. too many people get took by Chad and Brad IP stolen and they move forward with it. And now the industry has gone in a way that there's no real protection and, you know, to, Create something it would be nice. I love the <laughs> system you guys are talking about too. You know. Yeah. But we're keeping that on the low. Yeah. But yeah. it's like that Beatles song, the "Come system. Together" right. right now. You know. That's it. Like you said, a closed fist hits harder. That's it. A megaphone hits even harder than that. <laughs> <laughs> Great closing words. So everybody, this has been another sessions with Dr. Darby Brandon. Thanks for joining us. If you want to try any of the terps that we were smoking today, hit up the Terpy Van Winkle. It's a distro in California. These are the best flavors you can get. Sun grown. They're the full expressions of the plant. This guy knows what he's doing. He's been doing it for over 20 years. He's a resin farmer. Brandon, thanks for everything you do for the industry, Thank man. Thank you guys. Appreciate man. it. Well, thanks for joining us. It was a pleasure, brother. Thank you, Rosin Evolution for having a place for him to come through. He's gonna get his bags right after this. Yo. And then uh, we'll see you next time. Best. Enjoy the Rosin Evolution uh, uh, rosin that I'm putting out there. You know what I mean? Every flavor you saw today was <laughs> made with that product. Exactly. You heard it here. Every flavor was washed with Rosin Evolution products. That's it. Can you confirm that? That was the bags and the press and screens. Confirm. Slurp on my turp, dog. Hey. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. Hell yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. Brother. Boom. Thank you, guys. It's a wrap. All right. It's a wrap. Sweet.